the tight five. It's time, ladies and gentlemen, iOS. It's only sport. Martin Devlin Lachlan War every afternoon on the program. We do the tight five, which is five separate sporting questions, roughly a minute or so on each. Well, we indulge. Here we are in France. We'll, we'll rave on for more than a minute on each of these. Every question specifically geared around the two Rugby World Cup semi-finals this weekend. So, South Africa have named an unchanged team. Is that a surprise at all? What is that telling you, Lachlan? Can England cause an upset? Is there shades of 2019 here? Because as we've gone through the week, you know, that was kind of floated at the beginning of the week, but it's just becoming more and more prevalent in, in most pre-match discussions about that semi-final. Key players for the All Blacks this weekend are going to be who, as far as you can think? Are we going to see our full bench used against Argentina? And of course, the final question has got to be, is it going to be a repeat of 1995, deja vu all over again, us and the Yarpies meet in the final? Let's kick it with South Africa though, and that unchanged team. Now, a couple of things around this. A, I like it because... I've been agreeing with Justin Marshall for weeks and weeks and weeks about the All Blacks and we've in months and we've been criticizing Ian Foster and the selectors for not playing the same 23 and Justin was adamant right throughout the pool stage that even though the opponents were minnows, we should still be playing that team. The caveat I'd put on that for South Africa is again the quality of the opposition that they have played up until this point in the tournament as opposed to us. You know, we played France. Okay, so that was their pool match against Ireland. But our next one against Italy, against Namibia, they were playing Tonga and they were playing Scotland, right? Then, of course, they get a monster quarterfinal and we get a monster quarterfinal. So, why is from Rassi Erasmus to select the same 23 or not? I will put a tick in his box saying, yes, because they have to treat this like a final. And we heard that from Foster yesterday and Sam Kane as well, that you can't go into this game thinking about the following game. You've actually got to go into this game thinking that this is a must win like the quarterfinal was. So is that Rasmus is thinking here, do you think? Yeah, I think I think part of it, at least when um for the uh quarterfinal it felt like he was playing some games with Fifta Kluk and Andre Pollard coming off the bench and then they had a five three split, but then they're doing it again. I guess it worked in that quarter final and they've got another tough opponent against a Northern Hemisphere team. Um, but also, it wasn't as if those guys, Andre Pollard and Fafta Klerk, came on very late in the game. I'm just looking at the match centre here and looking at the substitutions. Marnie Lebock and Corbus Reinach, who started at first five and half back respectively, came off in the 44th minute. <laughs> so they basically did a half. Yeah, they, they did a half. And they did a similar thing um, with a couple of their forwards as well. Uh, you know, one of their props came off in the 50th minute. So, But in terms of their 9 and 10, the starters played 44 minutes and then the guys who came off the bench played 36 and I think for the majority of at least the first sort of 10 to 20 minutes of that first half, France had about a, anywhere between about three and a seven point lead, I think. And then, of course, South Africa took the lead. So, look, it worked in that match. Um, it's, it's you know, they might do something different with the game, uh, this game because Rassi Rasmus and the head coach Jacques Nenebar like to play around with their tactics and what they do and when they, you know, like last year, for example, they brought in a brand new front row after half an hour against the All Blacks. Yeah, that's right. Half an hour was it. And then out of nowhere, they had a 7-1 split forwards backs on the bench at the Twickenham uh, game before the World Cup started. So they were always sort of ahead of the curve in terms of weird substitutions or um, selections for their teams. But I'd suspect they'd go with the same one. They'd do a similar thing again because it worked in that first game. And look, they won't ever admit this, but they're probably looking at this game going, as much as England are going to be a test, they won't be as much of a test as the French game. Um, so I wonder if, because of that, and they'll pose a different sort of threat, they might tr uh, try a couple more things. Um, in saying that, and you brought it up there, you want to play your best team, and the team you would ideally have for the final, probably three games in a row, three, four games in a row if you can. And they're probably looking at this final saying, should we get through, we'll have the All Blacks. Are we going to play the way we did against France in terms of the team we select and the substitutions, we're going to do that the same way against the All Blacks, probably, because the All Blacks and France are both two very, very good sides. So I'd say they're looking at the final and thinking, let's have another game where we're doing a similar thing with who we're picking and when we're bringing guys off the bench. Let's do that again for the semi-final. Can England do a 2019? Now let's just go back to that semi-final against the All Blacks. I was there watching that game, Yokohama. Um, uh, just <laughs> Even now while I'm saying this, I'm shaking my head in front of you, aren't I? Because it was just mm. such an abject performance. We were so beaten up that night. But it's more about the headspace because after beating Ireland, and, and this, to get Ian Foster admitting that at the presser yesterday, to get 
Shag Cersei Steve Hansen on the show admitting it today for I think the first time I've ever heard him say that that mm. they were a little lax in their preparation they did get it wrong they they didn't refocus in time Fozzie said yesterday that it was pats on the back and things like that right yeah uh, Shag said he actually admits that he got a couple of the selections Which he w- he would not have admitted four years ago no certainly not he was I mean, defiant saying no we were in that game absolutely know? so so you know England to beat South Africa what I'm trying to paint the picture here is that Yes, it would be an upset on paper, but given what we saw from that England side four years ago, and given that there are so many players in that side who have revenge on their minds and must be hurting from that defeat and get a chance to rewrite history by beating and knocking out the world champions in the semi-final, I've got to say it's a possibility. It's not a probability because I still think that South Africa are a superior team in every aspect. And England have been poor and they've been poor and they bumbled their way through to this point. Mm. However... Is it still niggling away at you that it is knockout rugby? And we've seen it. We've seen it happen four years ago, so that means it can happen. Yeah, I'll say this, at least from what I can remember. England four years ago um, had looked better during the tournament because they put away Argentina pretty comfortably and won all the other pool games apart from their last pool game, which was against France, which like our last pool game four years ago against Italy, was called off because of the um, typhoon. There you go. Um, so they didn't actually play all four of the games. And then they absolutely walloped the Wallabies in the quarterfinals by I think a very similar score to how much we beat Ireland by. So they were on a huge high as well. So that England team, I think, was actually a very, 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 very good team. Very well coached. And I think Eddie Jones was timing their run perfectly. Remember that he just said they only had to win, beat the All Blacks once. Yeah, and it was they did. That's right. He said it before that's that tournament, which is what they did. did. So I, I don't think the single team is as good as that one, nowhere near it. Um, they've got pretty much the same team with a couple of guys thrown in there who weren't there four years ago. But they've got, in terms of the coaching group, they don't have the experience. I don't think they've got the nous in their coaching group that they did with uh, Eddie Jones. Because, look, Eddie Jones had as his lead assistant four years ago, John Mitchell, who was the defense coach. That defense was impenetrable in that semifinal. So... I, you know, it's 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 wonderful to daydream about these things. I think the gap between England and the All Blacks four years ago, and we've said it many times ourselves, that All Blacks team was on a slide. Mm-hmm. You know, they weren't the same mm-hmm. team they were, say, two Try or three uh, years uh, prior. So the gap wasn't as big as, I think, this, between the Springboks team and the England team now. England haven't been in great form, and as much as they've looked better during the tournament and have found their way into the semifinals, and there needs to be credit given to them for that, they're not as good as the Springboks. They don't have the, 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 the depth. They don't have the roster. They don't have the coaching group. Uh, nowhere near the coaching group. And when you've got Springboks, you know, not not just fans, but rugby pundits saying that this team is better than the yeah, one four yeah, years ago, yeah, yeah. I would argue that the class of teams this year isn't as good as four years ago. I think, weirdly, I think the All Blacks team of four years ago is probably better than this team right now. I'd say the same about, uh, obviously, definitely the Wallabies, my goodness. I'd say the same about England. Definitely the same about Wales. Ireland and France are probably better this time around, but I don't think the competition is as tight as it was four years ago. Um, or no, 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 that's not the right word. Not as tight, but not 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 as good. Not as high at, at a high a high enough level. So I think for the Springboks to now be in a better position than they were four years ago, which I think we can all agree on, it's, I think it's just too tall a task. And we can you know huff and puff for about twenty minutes, half an hour, but they'll get to a point where the class of South Africa will show through. Argentina versus the All Blacks then. Just quickly on the complacency thing, or if there is any, I was impressed yesterday from what we heard from Ian Foster and Sam Kane, also Bowden Barrett, Aaron Smith, and it's just been reinforced today um, by Conrad Smith on this show, as well as Steve Hansen, that, you know, <laughs> this is the only time where I'm going to say this. I think they've taken the learnings. I do. <laughs> I think that I think that they have banked what happened four years ago, and I don't believe they're going to make the same mistake about thinking this game is actually won before this game has been won. I, I mean, I, I, I just get that from them. The fact that they're publicly talking about it and acknowledging it, I think, is really important. Yeah, and I think it, it's a bit like 2007. I think you've got to go through that hardship to then realise how much you don't want to go through it again. Um, and so for the All Blacks, there's uh, maybe about half the team were there four years ago. Uh, obviously, Ian Foster was there four years ago. Scott McLeod was, I'm pretty sure. He was an assistant four years ago. Um, you know, you can be on these highs and you can kind of sit there and try and predict what it'll feel like to lose. But until you go through it and you essentially, there's no um, there's no easy way to put it, but let down a country of yeah, five million people. Totally, let man. them down. Totally, man. Um, as much as yourselves. Then unless you go through that, you don't know what it's like. So when you do go through it, 
as was the case in 2007, you just don't want to feel that horrible pain again, particularly with the expectation that's put on you. Now, the All Blacks are really benefiting from the fact that um, once they got their quarterfinal, which was a final out of the way, they've essentially got, I don't want to say a two-week break, but they've got two weeks before they face another test at the same level. Again, no disrespect to Argentina, but they're not the same threat that Ireland and South Africa, or really England, are. So um, the language is different, and I actually noticed it very much with Ian Foster yesterday. He kept on saying, you know, we're not patting ourselves on the back. We're not getting carried away. We're not going to do that. And then he said, you know, four years ago, we did that too much. And you can tell by my language, we're not doing that yeah, now. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. And, and what stuck with me is what Dane Cole said earlier in the week. I think it was on Monday, Paris time. So it would have been sort of Tuesday morning over in New Zealand. He said, um, you know, I, I, I do not want to play for a th- in, a, in a third, fourth no game. Does, it is a horrible week. It's a horrible Monday when you come back to work. I don't want to go through it again. It's not nice. And so they are aware that if they don't win this week and they don't turn up, they've got to go through that horrid, horrid feeling. Or no one wants to play in a third or fourth playoff match. It is the worst game to play, I think, in all the sports. At the FIFA World Cup, in this game, at whatever other to- at this tournament, whatever other sport around the world that has it, you don't want to play in it. Because it's who's the best of the losers? But that's exactly it. You know, what's the point? So... No, there's a change in language, and I think there'll be a change in attitude, and it actually is kind of good that they're playing a team that isn't as good as, say, this England team that they had to play four years ago. Um, It helps that that's the case as well. A couple of parts to this one. We've got two to go. A couple of parts to this one. Key players for the All Blacks against Argentina, and are we going to see the full bench being used? I'll answer the second question first. Yes, I do believe we will this time. Remember uh, that Christy and... Damien McKenzie got no time at all against Ireland. Key players for the All Blacks. Now, if you asked me pre-match Ireland, I would have told you that the key players to me were our loose forwards, um, how combative they were going to be, the ball carrying and everything like that, um, how especially we were, we, were, we were going to compete up front. This time, with the perspective being put on it that Argentina are going to bring it and bring it really physical, I believe that the key player or players for me are going to be our two inside backs. I believe it's going to be Aaron Smith and Richie Mwanga because we're going to get a lot of front foot ball and we're going to have a few more gaps to exploit than the Irish defence allowed. And I'm looking at Aaron Smith as an absolute key to this game. He even admitted yesterday and that he started terribly against Ireland. He said the two first two passes, he said, I threw to no one. He said he then got a yellow card. Yeah. He felt embarrassed about that. He felt he let his teammates down. I'm expecting an enormous performance from him. And I also think the other key player is Bowden Barrett. And because, again, I just believe we're going to get a bit more space. I think it's going to break up a little in the second half especially. There's going to be a few back, a few extra gaps, and I think that he's the guy to exploit that. He seems to be full of confidence again. So as much as, you know, here I am answering my own question, mate, before you do it, but as, 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 as much as this is going to be a massive physical confrontation, I don't know, I'm leaning towards those guys as being the key players. Yeah, I think uh, when you look at how we beat Argentina earlier in the year, there was a lot of real quick, slick passing, short passing, um, ball going to hands and being kept alive at, at such a high pace that they were, even if they were just half gaps, they were finding gaps and hitting them hard. And I remember there was one try, and I think it was off the blind side, it was on the left side of the field in the first half, where you had three guys bunched up in a tight space, and it was uh, Bowden Barrett, Geordie Barrett was another one as well so they, they they i think i think the playmakers will have um a fair bit of room yeah, you've pretty much answered it anyway i'm going to say the same thing as you i okay. think i think um they'll they'll look for ways to pretty much open up the field a lot because they'll have the ability to do so they'll be facing a team that defensively isn't as um nothing against argentina but i, I think isn't as impenetrable to use that word again as ireland and so I think they'll 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 find a way to open up the um, open up the game a lot more. So as long as the forwards front up and give them that platform, which they will, uh, because this is an Argentina pack that again I don't think poses the same threats as Ireland does. Um, you'd have to look to Aaron Smith in particular, because the moment that the ball this will be great. The moment that the ball starts going wide, then they give it to the likes of Will Jordan, Rico Yuani. They start to stretch the opposing defensive line that then will force in the next few phases the Argentina defence to go, okay, heck, we need to make sure we're covering the outside. That'll open up holes closer to the totally breakdown, agree. and then Aaron Smith can hit those totally and agree. have Richie Moanga right totally next agree. to him, or have someone like Mark Talia maybe becoming a first receiver on either side of the ruck as well, and get them to hit those gaps as well. So that's what I'd like to see the All Blacks actually do. Finally then, who wins the two semifinals, and is it going to be 1995 all over again? Yep. It is. Yes. It is. Yep. I, I totally believe it You've too. asked us a couple of times during the week, and I haven't wavered. We'll absolutely beat Argentina, and England aren't good enough to beat South Africa. Simple as that. 
Come on down, Susie the waitress. We've missed you, girl. Devlin. Down goes Frasier. Down goes Frasier. The platform.